This is an accessory review from a company called Akasi, and they made accessories for the MacBook, MacBook Pro. Two of the products that we'll be looking at in this video, one of them will be a 5-in-1 USB Type-C hub for MacBook Pro, which is the one that I have in the hand right now. And the other one is a USB 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD enclosure, which there are some uses for this that are really great, and I'm going to share that with you. Let's find out together what I think about these products. This is Artist Right. Full disclosure, Acasis has sent me these products to review. They did not have the opportunity to review this video before it went live, and also all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Let's start out by looking at their 5-in-1 USB Type-C hub for MacBook Pro. It's a pretty compact device. It has a light that lights up in blue when you have this plug in. It will take two of your USB Type-C port on the system, and what this does is expand it into five different ports. On this hub itself, you have the opportunity to use a Thunderbolt 3, which is a Type-C connection. And what this will do is allow you to run one 5K or two 4K display at 60 Hertz. It will also carry 40 gigabits per second of data. So if you link it up, for example, to their external NVMe enclosure, it should work at full speed. So we're going to be doing those tests afterwards uh, in this video. And the other thing, too, is that it will also allow power pass-through because I have a display that does power delivery. So we're going to see if this works to power the laptop when we have all this plug in. In addition to that, you have three USB 3.2 Type A. So if you ever need a Type A port that has high speed, well, this would definitely be the one. And while you plug these in on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, you'll be covering the headphone jack. So they do build in the headphone jack on the bottom as well. And this is a 3.5 millimeter one. And even though this says is really for the MacBook Pro, it will also fit in the MacBook Air. For example, this is the MacBook Air M1 and I can plug this in on the side without any problems at all because all the ports on Apple machine are standard size and they will pretty much be universal across all the devices. In fact, all the Apple computers that are the current model since 2016 have eliminated most of the USB type A ports and they went with USB type C. So this is what we have. Another thing that I want to note too, is that on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, when you plug this in, you can still use the MagSafe plug without any issues because the headroom on this side is extremely small. So it won't interfere with that whatsoever. The next thing I want to talk about is one that has a lot of interest to me. And this is the USB 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD enclosure. This is using what I think they call the M.2 key. It is a 2280, which is pretty much the standard size SSD you have on the market. And this is what the enclosure looks like. It's built out of aluminum, is really great, and it's super solid. So you can drop, you can do things to this. It won't necessarily break or conform that much. And this also does a really good job dissipating heat from the system. What comes in the package is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. This is compatible with USB 4, so that's what they have included. There is a thermal pad and also this nub that you would use as plastic stopper to hold the SSD or the NVMe stick in place and the drive itself. So what's different about the Acasa system compared to all the other ones that I've seen is that this is pretty much no tool required. They did not include any tool whatsoever. And what you would simply do is that there is a ledge here that says open. You just push it down and it reveals the enclosure. So I already have an NVMe stick in there and this has a thermal pad, but essentially what you would do is use this stopper, this little black nub here, and you would sandwich between the NVMe blade, put it in and just push it down and it's super simple. So far in the design, they use these ball bearing type things to lock this in place. And in my testing so far, I'm not planning to constantly open and close this. I think it should be fine. And I haven't done any drop tests or anything, but I also think that this is rather tight, that it's not really that loose. The other thing that you want to note as well is that the lips for all these things for the case itself is actually under the device. So you can see that this kind of just fits right in that shell. So chances are, if you really drop this, I don't think this is going to dislodge this back case by any means. So the NVMe that I'm using with this is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. And this is the one that after checking on their website, they don't recommend that this one be used. So there are a few of them that they have recommend. For instance, they said on their rec website that they do not recommend Samsung 970 EVO Plus, Samsung PM981, 
Western Digital SN850 ADATA or Crucial Drive to be used in these enclosures. What they recommend is the Samsung 970 EVO, the non-plus version, Samsung 980 Pro, and also the Seagate 510 series. And also based on their website, they were able to test this drive with a 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor on the Samsung 980 Pro, and they were able to get a read speed of around 2.7 gigabytes per second and a write speed of around 2.3 gigabytes per second. And what we're going to do is plug this in to run the test. But part of the reason why I'm really looking towards this is because I am going to be using this laptop, the M1 Max, as my primary machine. So what I really want to do is figure out a way how I can get those NVMe drives that are inside my Mac Pro on a PCIe card and reprovision them so I can use them with this machine effectively and fairly efficiently without causing it too much, but still maintaining a pretty good speed on the system. And one more thing I want to add about this too is that why would someone look at a, an enclosure like this when there are solutions on the market? Well, a couple of things. Number one, if you already have these drive around, this is going to be the next best thing that you can do. Secondly, the read and write speed on here, even though I'm using a not recommended SSD, is still much faster than a lot of the off-the-shelf version that you can get on the market. Granted, there are really expensive ones you can get that perform very similar to this, but that really costs a lot more. So the standard bearer that I would probably say compared to this really well is the Samsung T7, and that generally reads and write at around a gigabyte per second. Definitely slower than this drive. So if you're a photographer, you may not need these kind of read and write speed, but if you're a video pro and you're constantly dealing with 4K or even 8K footage, this is definitely going to help and it will work well as an external fast storage that you can use it to edit your video live. But now I have this plug in, it has mounted on the system and what we're gonna do is a disk speed test using Blackmagic. So let's select the drive. And with that selected, I am going to run a one gigabyte per second stress test first. So based on this non-recommended drive from the manufacturer, I'm getting close to around 1.3 gigabyte per second. In fact, it just peaked at the write speed of above 1.3 gigabyte per second with the read speed of around 2.7, close to 2.8 gigabytes per second or so. This is really not bad at all, considering this is not even the recommended spec. And I don't think you're going to lose your data or anything like that at all when you're using a non-recommended drive. You're just not gonna get the maximum efficiency that this enclosure can offer. So what I'm gonna do now is change the file size to five gigabyte and let's run a test. So on a five gigabyte per second file size, we're getting around 1.3 write. And for the read speed, we're still getting around 2.7 or so, close to 2.8 gigabyte per second, which is exactly what we expect how these drive would perform. Granted, if we use the SSD that I recommend, it will probably perform faster. If I end up getting those SSDs or getting one of those to run a test, I will republish this video, but that is pretty much the performance of the Acasis. Uh, this is the TBU401, and I think it's definitely a great performer, if, especially if you're looking for a toolless design to just mount and unmount your NVMe SSD, this is definitely a good one to have. What I'm gonna do is stop this test. We're gonna reset this whole entire setup and I'm gonna put the hub in, set up two displays, and we're going to run this test again and see how this does. Be back in just a sec. So I reset up the studio to run the test on the five-in-one USB Type-C hub. Right now I have this hub plugged into the side of my 16-inch MacBook Pro, and it is linked to their NVMe external enclosure. And what I'm gonna simply do is run a Blackmagic disk speed test to see if we're still getting the same speed when we have that pass through. So I will click on start. And we can see right now that the write speed is close to 1.3 gigabytes per second. And the read speed is around 2.8 gigabytes per second, which I think is really great for these drive anyway. So we're not seeing a drop in form whatsoever. That means the pass through is working at full speed. I'm gonna stop this, pull it out, eject the drive. And what we're gonna do next is link this up to two external displays. And we'll see if this is going to work or not. A few things to note is that this is BenQ PD3220U and that is BenQ SW271C. This is a Thunderbolt display that can provide 100 watts of power to my system. And that display is a hardware calibrated display for photographer. And we're supposed to see both of them coming on any time now. And as we can see, so obviously what this is telling us is that this hub is able to 
expand the signal out and do 4K60 on both of these displays without any problem. Right now, they're all set to mirroring right now, and you can see that the display is also on on my MacBook Pro as well, so you can see that. And since I have this set up, there's two more tests that I want to do. Right now, I'm going to leave all these displays running at native 4K for the time being, so I'm not going to change anything. But what I want to do is try out the Acasis external enclosure. And rather than using the Thunderbolt 3 or a USB 4 to USB 4, what I want to do is what happens and what speed are we going to get if we use a USB Type-C to a USB Type-A 3.2 connection on this USB hub. And you're going to see lower speed. This is not something that is wrong with the device. It's just pretty much a limitation with regards to technology. So we're going to plug that in and see if this works. Another thing I also want to mention is that the display power delivery is charging up the laptop as we are speaking, as we're running this test. So it is functioning as we would expect. So it is powering to 4K display at 60 hertz and is also giving us a power pass through, which is exactly what we want. I will select the drive and use Blackmagic Disk Test again to run this. And we'll do the file test size at five gigabytes. We're going to run this. And for the right right now, we're getting a little bit over 700 megabytes per second, which is actually not too bad at all. And let's see what the read speed we're going to get. We're getting around like 660, 670 megabytes per second for the read. This is pretty much within spec because if you really think about it, when we use USB 3.0, that really drops down the speed to around 10 gigabytes per second. And if we think about 10 gigabytes per second, this is kind of about what we would expect with overhead and everything. I think this is functioning normal. And the other thing we have to remember too is that yes, even though these Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports can have much more bandwidth, when you take that bandwidth and start to divide it into multiple ports in a hub, you do lose some of that bandwidth along the way. So it's just something that's normal. I think this is acceptable if you want to use it this way. Personally, what I would do is set the hub up and use other USB devices that may not require this much speed on this USB hub and then plug in this drive directly using the Thunderbolt 3 connection that comes with it on the other side of the computer's USB hub here. This way you get the full speed and performance out of the machine. So I hope that you find these two devices review from Acasis helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.